Alright, hey guys, this is Devin Sherry working with Unreal Engine 4, and we're going to continue with our series of tutorials working with uh, the game Radial Impact, which is a game that I made on my own using Unreal Engine 4 with Blueprints. Uh, where we left off last time, we have just the ability to play our game, pretty much. So we're able to click on the circles, they grow, they shrink, depending on uh, how big the dynamic circle is compared to the static circle. Uh, but we also have our game mode buttons that we have that we can click on and hover over and everything like that. Uh, so the last thing we're going to do is actually create a uh, kind of a, a menu AI, which basically, until we want to play the game, it plays the game by itself. Uh, just to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about for an end result. So right now, this is the end result. The game is playing itself. I'm not clicking anything. Um, it randomly picks a duration of delay to stop the animation, and then based on how close it is, it still gives us results in the top left corner. Um, and then if we want, we can click on classic mode, and when we do that, it will allow us to play the game. So now, right now we're playing the game again, and if we don't click on it, the game doesn't play itself or anything. It just plays how it should. Um, but then if we hit the space bar, it'll play the, men the menu AI will play again. So right now I'm not clicking on anything. And then when we click, it'll start the game over. So that's going to be the, our end result. Uh, so to start out with what we need to do, everything right now in this uh, video is going to be done in the BP underscore dynamic underscore circle blueprint. Uh, this takes into consideration that you follow the last two uh, tutorials where we first made the game button menu items, the uh, the waves mode, the classic mode, and the time trials mode buttons. And also takes into consideration that we followed the one before, uh, after that, uh, the one with the dynamic and static circle creation. Uh, so if you haven't watched those, please watch those before you continue here, just, just so you don't get confused. Uh, so with that in mind, let's go into our BP dynamic circle blueprint. And what we're going to need to do first is create a custom event. So let's just right click, do add custom event. And we'll just name this menu AI. And we're going to call this in, in a series of places, but we're first going to need to set up the logic for the menu AI. And what we need to do first is create a whole new variable. It's going to be a Boolean, and we're going to call this B is playing game. And we're going to set the default value to false, because uh, we don't want the player to be playing the game right away. We want the menu AI to kick in right off the bat. Uh, and then with that in mind, let's also make the B can input variable. We're going to make that false as well by default. So let's uncheck it and compile that. Uh, the reason why is because we don't want the player to be able to input until they're ready to play the game, pretty much. So with that in place, let's drag out the B is playing game variable, and we're going to need to create a branch from it. Because this menu AI wants to go ahead and check to see if we're already playing the game or if, it, if we're not playing the game. And it's pretty much if we're not playing the game that we want to go ahead and set the logic behind the menu AI and allow it to play itself. So after we have the false, we're going to basically connect the false. So if the game is not being played, uh, what we want to go ahead and do first is just uh, get the scale dynamic circle timeline variable that we created in the other tutorial. And from that, we're going to do a set play rate. And we just want to make sure the play rate's at 1. Uh, just to make sure there's no any kind of accidental hiccups for the play rate getting slower or faster or anything like that. So we'll connect that up. And then it's from here uh, that we want to go ahead and create a new delay node. So we can just type in delay. And the duration of this delay is going to vary based on what we want. Because uh, when the menu AI plays, it waits a certain delay. So any time between like 0.9 or whatever we end up setting it as. Uh, so between maybe like 0.9 and 1.1 or something like that, it waits a certain amount of time and then stops the circle from moving and then it de detects how big or smaller or how close those sizes are between the static circle and dynamic circle and gives a score, kind of as if we were playing it, but it's just the menu doing it. Uh, so just to get a randomized duration, we can get a random float in range uh, function node. And for right now, we'll do between... Uh, we'll do between one point, uh, sorry, uh, point 0.9 and 1.4 is fine. And then plug that up into the duration. And then it's after this delay that we want to tell the timeline, the scale dynamic circle timeline, to stop scaling the circle. So let's grab the scale dynamic circle and pull from it the stop function.
And then it's after we do the stop that we want to do and get the macro for the compare size of circles. That's the logic behind determining how uh, big or smaller the circles are to each other and then gives you a rating based on that difference. So we could just copy out a new co compare size of circles. We could just drag that out. And after that happens, we want to create a new delay. But we're just going to hard, uh, hard code a value of uh, we'll 0.5. And the reason why we're going to do this delay is that, you know, it does the comparison, it stops the circles, and then it's going to wait 0.5 seconds. And then after the 0.5 seconds, uh, is when we're going to set back the playback position of the scale dynamic circle timeline, we're going to set that back to zero so it starts from the beginning. So we do set playback position. And we're going to leave the default value of zero in there. We're going to connect that up. We can also compile, just get rid of some of those errors. And after we reset the playback position, uh, all we gotta need to do is uh, tell the static circle, hey, let's update the static circle again and start the process over. So with that in mind, let's grab the static circle reference variable and pull out the function for update static circle. And then we just need to plug that up. And then the last thing we need to, need to do uh, within the dynamic circle blueprint, because uh, that's the end of the menu AI logic, that's everything we need to do. Uh, so just to kind of recap what we just did, uh, we made a custom event for menu AI that we can call, that we will be calling in certain sections of our blueprints. Um, and as soon as it gets called, it checks to see if we're playing the game or not. And if we're not, we're going to basically set the play rate of our static circle timeline. We're going to set a random delay, and then after that delay is basically waited for, uh, we stop the scaling of the circle, we compare the size of the circles, we delay about 0.5 seconds, we set the playback position of that timeline again to zero, just so we can start it over, and then we update the circle and the whole process starts over again. So the last thing we need to do uh, within our dynamic circle blueprint is create one last branch in between the actual clicking events of our static and dynamic circles, so let's disconnect that. And it has to be whether or not we're playing the game. So let's drag a uh, get of that and then a branch from that. And then connect these guys back up. And so basically, if we are playing the game, that's when we want to be able to click on these circles and actually be playing the game. Because uh, this logic determines if we're playing the game and we want to click on the dynamic circle or the static circle. So. Uh, with that in place, uh, we're not going to see any kind of changes uh, whether or not you know this is working. But uh, where we can see the changes in the uh, static circle blueprint. So let's go back into that, and it all depends on the event begin play and the update static circle. So we have to disconnect those guys. And what we need to do now is create another branch uh, for the for whether or not we're playing the game or not. So we need to grab the dynamic circle reference node, pull from that, uh, B is playing game. Uh, right now it's not being shown because we forgot to make that variable public. So let's make that public, compile just so it reads it, and then go back to our static circle. And now if we pull from this and do is playing, we can do the get is playing game. And then from that, we're going to pull the branch from it. So from the playing game boolean, type in branch. And just for tidiness, we'll organize it in this manner. So these two events in our static circle blueprint, uh, the event begin play and the update static circle, they're going to get plugged in. And it's from here, if we are playing the game, we're just going to connect it like normal. It's only when we're not playing the game that we want to go ahead and call it the menu AI. So in order to do that, we need to grab another reference to our dynamic circle blueprint and then pull from it menu AI. So connect the false up into the menu AI and then from here we can do change circles location. So let's compile that, let's hit save, and now we should uh, be able to see the menu I play itself. So let's see if that's true. So let's play. And we are seeing that it is playing.
uh, but there's no way for us to play. Like It's only going to be the menu AI. Uh, but we got that working, so what we need to do now is set up logic for to allow us to play the game after we click on classic mode. Um, so we're going to do that in the next tutorial. Uh, but for now, that's going to be the end for this one. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. And again, my name is Devin Cherry, and thanks for watching.